Intuitively, we may think that a pulse wave can be created by combining two square waves. It sounds similar to the technique of summing two identical oscillators together, but by the law of superimposition it will not introduce any asymmetry. It will modify both positive and negative phases equally. The value of the pulse waves comes from the so-called pulse width, which is chiefly in the horizontal axis, or the duty cycle of the waveform. When modulated, the wave may seemingly take on the characteristics of two waves or a chorus type effect, but as we'll demonstrate, it is a lot more than that. Typically, when we can synthesize pulse waves, we can achieve it by modulating the width of a square wave. You may know of this as pulse width modulation. We can achieve similar results with any other waveform by the same principle we demonstrate here, and we'll look at this in a second video, part 2. An interesting alternative to a pulse width option is to mix two sawtooth waves together and invert and offset the phase of the second waveform. In Absynth, there is no go to pulse width option, as many of you might know, but we can still create it. So we'll start by opening up the wavetables. As you go to the spectrum tab, you'll see that the saw wave has a consistent series of all harmonics. This offers a lot of options for using filters and subtractive synthesis, because we have a lot to work with. But in this case, we'll remove harmonics by superimposing another wave by going to the transform menu and selecting mix. The default is a sine wave. We'll load up another saw wave and invert the phase. As you can see, the wave has disappeared by superimposition. We can now offset the mix to reveal either of the saw waves. But in this case, we'll leave the mix ratio in neutral position and instead offset the phase to introduce the pulse itself. By cycling the phase we can adjust the pulse width through a square wave up to the narrowest of pulse widths. But if we leave it symmetrical at 50%, the result is a square wave. In other words, we are left with only the odd harmonics here. If you can't see the wave shape, you can listen to identify the square. Simply listen for the second octave harmonic to detect whether it is present or not. If it is not there, it's a square wave. Well, this is generally true because all the octave harmonics are even numbers. Having only odd harmonics, the square wave has a particularly hollow sound, whereas a pulse is regarded as a richer sound. In the spectrogram here, you can see the odd harmonics present initially in the square wave, being enriched as the pulse width decreases. I'll demonstrate how to do this in real time in a moment, but while we're manipulating saw waves in the wave window, I'll show you how to add a staircase-like wave, which is basically achieved the same way as a square wave, except we leave the phase unchanged. In this window, we simply alter the frequency ratio. For example, let's choose 10 steps. The steps themselves are actually a high frequency saw wave. And what we need to do is decrease the mix ratio so that we are mixing more of the original gradient or the original staircase back in. This is more useful as a modulation source. So to do the pulse width modulation in real time, we'll load up a Absynth and a Blue Cat audio oscilloscope that I have here. And we'll go to new sound and we'll start with a filtered saw wave this time. And I'll show you that it's it's a lot more rounded than the digital saw wave. So it'll give a more natural sound. Change to double. 
solar wave filter two on the other section. Just to demo that. And we can flip the phase here on the front panel and we get nothing. But then we can offset the phase here. Notice how we have three decimal places. So you can get extremely narrow, extremely precise in the phase offset. And at 0.5 we have a square wave. But we can also go to the LFO and modulate the phase by going to Ossel main phase. And then we'll take it up to less than a quarter. And I prefer the triangle wave. Alter the rate. Just holding down two notes, now one note. You can see that it's actually going to only a quarter length of the wave, which is about 90 degrees of phase. If I go a little bit higher, it crosses over, and then it changes polarity, and then backwards. If you go to 75%, it's now three quarters of the way. And finally 100% does a full scale. And if we zoom out, we'll see that the there is an interesting pattern happening here with the, the overall phase. Well, let's take it back down. We can also simply detune one of the waves. There we have it. 